far too long Plundering and killing everyone When will we be free from this tyranny? The dress act they did say we're taking your tartan away The act of the union has been such a blow Three hundred years under Westminster foe Scottish resistance I will always be Scottish resistance It's my destiny Family clan I will wear my tartan our heritage runs through our veins We'll pass it on to our bands mm -hmm. We are in pain And are suffering This global pandemic is killing me and my family The corporate giant is giving me minimum wage My dignity's gone and I'm sitting here lost again We are told what to do and where to go to see by our own society Scottish resistance I will always be Scottish resistance it's my destiny family clan I will wear my tartan our heritage runs to our veins And we'll pass it on to our bands mm -hmm. Rob the poor and Feed the rich well, isn't life Such a bit how can we live this way? The Tories are here to stay My Scottish pride I need to decide My ancestors pain For my gain I should hang my head in shame We are to blame to let Westminster rule our brain Scottish resistance I will always be Scottish resistance It's my destiny The family clan I will wear my tartan our heritage runs through our veins We'll pass it on to our bands
Good evening, everyone. This is Scottish Resistance Chat Show live from the Scottish Resistance Community page uh, on the 11th of July 2022. Uh, I want to first welcome everybody uh, to the show, everybody watching uh, Nancy MacGyver, uh, Anita King, Alex Adam, Mandy Garden, um, Lillian Evans, uh, Maggie Brennan. Um, let's see who else. Thomas MacArthur at work. Go to work, mate. Um, yeah, that's those are the names that I can see now. Uh, if, to everybody else, if I haven't mentioned you, not by um, um, not on purpose, but it, your name doesn't show. So I uh, hope you enjoy the show. Let me introduce the panel to you. Um, first of all, um, ladies first, of course, uh, Sarah Sawyers. Um, I'm so happy to have you on the show. Uh, first time on this show. We've spoken before. We had you on the other show on Wednesdays as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm so happy to have you on this show. And I'm sure everybody watching uh, is too. Um, how Lovely are you doing? to be here. Great having oh, you. Oh, I'm exhausted, but good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, great having you on. And it's lovely to be here. That's good to know. And uh, we got, well, he, he's one of the regulars. Um, you know, he's, he's always here. And we're glad he's always here. <laughs> Mr. John Mellon, how you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm fine, Raymond. Yeah. Great. Delighted. Great. To, to down in the bottom corner as well. <laughs> great <laughs> having you on, mate. And our founder, Mr. James Scott, how you doing? I'm fine, Raymond. How are you? Doing really, really good. Um, I mean, one. I've got one thing to look forward to next week, which is a good thing, mm -hmm. but also a bad thing because I'm going to a Kiss concert, but it's the last time I'm ever going to see them. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's whatever you want, if, however you want to look at it. But then again, the last time I went to see them, it was supposed to be the last time. So who knows? They're going to come back. I don't know. They're my parents' age, so it's weird. <laughs> They're still running around on platform shoes. But yeah. yeah. Um, first thing that I want to mention, Thomas, uh, you, I know you're watching and you're working today. I'm, I was not able to um, uh, get your song ready to have it played during the show because we had some... Well, I had some technical issues uh, at at, um, at my end, so I'm really sorry that we uh, weren't able to uh, um, get your song ready for for the show. But when you're back next week, we're going to play it no matter what. Um, first topic, and that's the main reason, uh, besides great having her on, but also the Salvo lunch and the claim of rights. Um, Savo lunch last week, Sarah. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> it was it was an, a a really great it was a really great event, and we ended up we I think we had about 170 people there, and that was despite the fact that there were roadworks that people just they could not get there, um, there were, you know, rail strikes, all kinds of stuff that made it very difficult. Um, it you know it was a it was the opportunity to set it out, and we had Craig Murray and he you know, really talked about the way that the British state has become a rogue state. So this notion and talking about this notion of we have to do everything lawfully and legally, but how do you do that with a state that is absolutely um, disrespectful is a, a very mild word. You know, they, they have absolutely no um, interest apparently in international or, or, or even domestic law. And you know, he mentioned the fact that the, the provision for people to be held for longer without trial than is actually lawful has just been extended. So, you know, civil rights are going, international law, the, the Northern Ireland Protocol, EU withdrawal, and the international community, you know, is regarding the, the British state with a mix of kind of horror and and amusement, you know. That, so that was a really interesting context to to you know to follow, um, you know, to come in and talk about. Well, you know, they have done that in terms 
of the union and in terms of the relationship with the with Scotland within that union for a very very long time now but with this this air this um oh this facade of being terribly legal and democratic and so on and, and I think what we're seeing now of course is that the, the cracks are not just appearing the dam is coming down so you know, it's a very interesting moment I think it's a very powerful moment to be talking about what is right and you know the rule of Scottish law and Al Baird um, spoke about you, you know really how we're seeing colonization and the difference you know what independence really means is self-determination and of course we had Ian Lawson and I think he had everybody in tears and he, I think that his message was really about how we do this and he talked about what happened in Estonia you know he was there and he's got you know he was in Estonia as an, I think an ambassador I'm sorry if I've got that wrong but he had really deep and has deep links with the country and was and he saw was there and he witnessed the way that it was a cultural movement. You know, it was very much about identity and very much, you know, people joined, made a huge human chain and sang. You know, they, 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 they came up with this very creative, um, they had a party that backed it, which is, oh, you know, what we don't, well, we have, but we, you know, this, the, the party in power isn't exactly stirring itself to, be, to come up with creative solutions. But what they did was they came up with um, citizen. They offered citizenship to those who would would want to stay on. If you know when when Estonia was independent and would want to be part of an independent Estonia, and that took off kind of like wildfire. And so that by the time they came and you know had their vote or whatever, it was that that was already in place, and it was just this mass popular movement. It came from the people, and you know that's what he was saying and that, you know, we're looking at this, this absolute absence of real justice, this, this clear corruption, this absolute need for the people to take back control. And I think Definitely. all together, you know, that, that's a very powerful message. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> that, the, that all the videos for that you know, cleaned up will, will, will be available, you know, people will be able to get enough of that to get a sense um, but I was, you know, we were all exhausted and there was a huge, you know, well, not huge, but a, a group of people who worked, knocked themselves stupid, getting that done and getting it and making sure it was really good, really, really worked hard. Anita, I know, is watching. She was, <laughs> she was, she was one of them. And it, it did everything we wanted it to. And so now what we're, we're doing is we're looking at taking that around Scotland and, getting in touch with the people who signed up we've got well over 600 now signed up so that we can create these hubs and so the message can can go out and because it's what it's what people are really needing to hear that when our politicians talk about popular sovereignty they're, they're trying to say well you know we've got that popular sovereignty the Scottish people are sovereign so you know we we can do this but they've let that genie out of the box. That's not popular sovereignty. That's parliamentary sovereignty. And people being allowed to vote for the government that they want. I think that's just called democracy, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's kind of enshrined in the United Nations Charter of, of Nations. So we're talking about something else. You know, we're talking about the fact that it comes back to the people and that it's their final decision. And all that's missing is a mechanism by which they can say this is our final decision, you know, with, with one voice. So well, the, it's, it's going to come back to the people. Yeah, d definitely. And the, the, the good thing is that ever, I don't know if it's exactly ever since the, 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 the date was, 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 was put forth, um, but ever s around, since around that time, more <coughs> and more and more people are opening their minds to other, I wouldn't say ideas, but, but options. And and it proved that at the Savo Lunch there were S P people there. They were from all political, uh, uh, well, not Tories of course, but and, but they were they were all all kinds of, from every political part of the political spectrum. They, people were there, yeah. 
And John, you, you, you were there as well? Well, we, uh, the sound launch. Yeah. Oh, listen, uh, those speakers, Sarah, weren't they? Ian Lawson, David Henry was brilliant. Funny, but brilliant. <laughs> Laurie Flynn, uh, World in Action, next World in Action man as well. Yep. Our, our oh, Laurie. Laurie is a really good friend of mine, and I didn't mention oh, it. Is he? Also. he, he is. <laughs> <laughs> and a CV <laughs> that would shame every politician. But Ian, Ian also stated that how progressive Estonia are since they've become independent. Yes. Well, we're degressing. <laughs> we're bottom yes. of the league now. You know, with all the resources we have, what's yep. happening to them? Have they yeah. been so gone? Mm-hmm. Well, that, that that is exactly the the well the the, the exact reason why this the the uh, Westminster government is, is so, just so scared, scared. Well, I, I don't want to use use other words, but they really are they really are scared to lose their cash cow. Really, yeah. This is the the weakest point right now, Raymond. Yeah, they're down on their knees. And that there was a certain part of this opportunity to walk out after they refused the S30 in front of the world press. A golden opportunity, which will be the focus in Scotland. Yeah. Instead of still sitting in their bums there waiting for God or whatever else. <laughs> yeah. James, what did you um, get to see about the, the launch? Or were you there as well? I wasn't there. Oh, <laughs> I keep very busy, guys, but I don't know much. To tell the truth about the claim of right, I don't know much about it. I need to get more info on it. I spend all my time on uh, historical events, protests of the Scottish resistance, making international contacts. I work tirelessly for the cause. I'll need to look into the claim of right. So far, I don't know much about it. Well, well look- can I, James, how about we'll I'll send you a bunch of stuff? Yes, I think it, I think it will electrify you, and yeah. we are going to need a claim of right event. So, how about it? Well, I'd certainly be interested in doing claim of rights eventually. The, I mean, we have, we have, we are exploring all sorts of different ways that we can move towards independence. One I looked at a few years ago was the the three estates. The Scottish Parliament was never closed completely; it was just put on hold. It was put in suspense, and we can bring that full sovereign Parliament back. It has just been suspended. All we need to do is have a majority. In fact, we've got a majority. We should be moving and calling in the three estates so that we can bring back a sovereign Scottish Parliament. We've got to explore every... Yes? Can can I just... As a matter of fact, the Parliament was not sovereign. It never had sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Sovereignty lay with the people and it was loaned to the Parliament. And so what what you had was actually was the other body the Convention of the Estates, which had previously been the General or Greater Council, and that was the kind of ombudsman that, yeah. that could could act when there wasn't a lawful parliament and could keep the parliament in check. Although it, you know it got bad at doing it laterally, but but with the claim of right, it really it it really came up trumps. So what we're looking at is actually, you know, the the Scottish Parliament itself was itself was dissolved but the convention of the estates was not that's what went into abeyance and because people have called people have called the convention of the estates the parliament and dicey makes that mistake he he gets really annoyed because he says you know oh the parliament was claiming all these rights that it never had no parliament flipping wasn't because it was not the parliament that passed the claim of right it was the convention of the estates so that body and that's we're absolutely in agreement with you that body existed as a provision rather than a standing body that sat, you know, it was a provision of the constitution and you cannot eliminate, you know, th- that provision. So it always exists in potential. Right. It always exists to be recalled, at least yeah. under our constitution. Well, so I'm very it, interested. If you send me that information, I would be very interested in reading it. Bill, I'd love to. <laughs> Sarah there, James. Uh, this is a plea to SNP members. A lot of them have reached out to us, to be honest with you, in solidarity. Get their MPs to do the same. Yeah. Get get their MPs to unify with us. Right? No arguments, like I said before. Just unity, solidarity. 
at least to, to uh, get, get their independence. Exactly. They need total unification, yeah. Yeah. independence, and I'm standing by the claim of right. And it I'm... takes a lot of courage, does it, Sarah, to do this, doesn't it? Well, you know what? I think the que- I think it would. I think it's a question of watch the disaster for our country, for our people unfold, or do something that 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 takes a bit of courage. And actually, there's not you know when there, there's no choice. And the thing I want to, I wish the politicians would would take on board is that they're they're they don't seem to learn from history. They are not. They're not taking on board how determined Westminster, the British establishment, is to hold on to Scotland. There is absolutely no way. It's worse than the Pharaoh of Egypt and Moses. There is no way they're going to let our people go. There is no way. And the only way that's going to come, is going to happen, is when the people themselves get up, state that they, they, no government, no parliament, are sovereign, this is their will. And if their politicians get behind them, then they will get behind those politicians. So get behind your people and your people will get behind you. That's what happened in Estonia. Yeah, and as, as, and as we all well know, poverty is increasing daily, not weekly. Yeah. And it's about to get a hell of a lot worse. Yeah. And what sort of families are going to see their children go hungry or wear poor clothes during the winter to try and keep warm. They wouldn't be able to keep warm at home. Well, by choice between warmth and food. Uh, and I, th- I think that, that that's when people suffer directly, it drives them in the right direction. They realise then that only independence can save them, save us, and save our country. That's the way it is. I think I don't even know if independence as a word is resonating now with people when they're looking at, you know, and we're talking about catastrophe for so many people, real catastrophe. And when they're looking at that, you know, the word independence doesn't seem to have much to do with that. But no, when you're looking, so when you're looking and you, what you're saying to them is we're looking at the power to do something about it. We're looking at restoration of Scottish constitutional government where the common good is at the heart of government where there's a, a you know the, the common good fund there was a a, a a percentage of every tax every tax that went into that fund there were provisions against hunger there were provisions against hardship that is got to be the way that that it's done and that is you do not you will not have any government that will do that that will that will look because they end up looking at self-interest and they end up looking at, you know, sitting and cheering the Queen's Jubilee and from front row seats or whatever it is. Unless there's checks and balances, unless you have that old tribunal, that convention or general council in place to hold them to that compact and to make sure that it is the interest of the people and that the way that the resources of a country are treated as, is as belonging to the people not something for some corporation to come along and exploit at a you know and, and give us a wee bit of it it's th- this is our country these are our resources we have to manage them for the good of the people when you're talking that way to people they hear that you know so we're mm-hmm. looking at the restoration through through a popular movement through a through a civic movement of scottish constitutional principles and those principles actually mean that a government that has violated them is no longer lawful in Scotland. So do that, you've got an automatic, you know, you're automatically suspending the government and then having a referendum on whether you want to bring them back or do something else. So you know, that's what's going, I think, that, that is what speaks to people, that we're looking at real change and we're looking at change based on authentically Scottish constitutional principle. We do have the people to, to would you say, lead leaders in that direction? Uh, and then you said non-political. I don't think you care too much for politicians. Sarah. 
I know you do. With a few exceptions. With a few exceptions. With I, a few I, I, I mean, we all them. These people I'm we all them. Politicians, I don't like them. <coughs> people that should be running countries are engineers, uh, people who know how to do things. Politicians are all talk, no action. It's all about making money for themselves. We need engineers, inventors, people with great minds to run countries. Not these idiot politicians. I don't trust any of them. We've got people with great minds, James. But, but Estonia was a great example. They had a party mm -hmm. to lead them to freedom. And yeah. the people were with that party. Yeah. And both of them joined together. And look at them now. Look at us. The poor well, man Scotland, of Europe. Scotland had a great system. The power that was lent by the people and exercised by government and monarch and so on that was kept separate from the kind of ombudsman, from the regulator. So you had a, 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 a convention that if it had, if it had stayed really clean, uh, as it were, if there hadn't been crossover, you have the notion that you have a body that doesn't, can't get corrupt because it doesn't have any power except to regulate those who do. What a brilliant system. And also you have all these assemblies you know, which, where everything that needs to get heard gets heard. You know, we, they, there were, I don't know how many borough assemblies that fed into that and also had their own national convention to look after the common good. Imagine if we had these assemblies and everything you need to hear, you know, the ferries, roads, um, you know, environmental problems, land reform, There's a, there are hearings and all the great minds in Scotland who have specific interests and specific ability get to put their their solutions and their proposals. We get to hear the problems and come up with best policy, best practice. Then those can go up to the people whose job it is to be politicians. But they're not going to be, as James said, they're not going to be great engineers. They're not mm -hmm. going to be fabulous problem solvers. They're not going to have ideas for, for um, you know, transport. They're not going to be able to look at the education system and say, look, we, we know much, much more about human human learning. We, we should do this. All the expertise is in the people, is out among the people. And we don't we don't utilize it. So I think, and James is right about that. But we could set up a system in Scotland where we did and where power is limited and the expertise and the direction is coming from that massive human wealth that we've got in Scotland. We could be amazing. Definitely. Sounds great. Definitely. Sounds great. Sounds like a great idea. Definitely. Um, I did upload the uh, server launch onto my YouTube channel, so it might be an idea to the video that uh, Dave Llewellyn sent to me originally for the the virtual rally that I upload that as well, so that that it will be will be out there as well. If that's okay great. with you. Great. Um, and if there's any other information that that videos that we could put up, that that would be an idea as well. So okay. we put it out there. Um, it might be a good idea to uh, move on. We were already a little bit late uh, due to technical if, uh, issues. James, our week in history. Well, this week in history, there's only one thing we can talk about, folks, and that is this day, the 11th of July, is the birth date of Robert the Bruce. Now, when you talk about Robert the Bruce, people in Scotland, because of watching stupid films like Braveheart, which gave a wrong idea of Robert the Bruce, you get people who slate Robert the Bruce. Now, what you've got to remember is that these times, the Bruce family, uh, there were several generations of them called Robert. Now, when Scotland uh, lost Alexander III in a fall from his horse, the Robert the Bruce, the grandfather of the future Robert the Bruce that became king, was 80 years of age. Now, that is some age for way back in that time period. But he was 80 years of age, and he was a man putting himself forward for the Bruces to be uh, the monarchy of Scotland. They had a, a claim. When you look at it, they had a claim. The claim, though, was between the Bruces and the Balliols. Now, the stupid idea of making Edward the first arbiter to decide who would be King of Scots was probably 
one of the worst decisions that's ever been made in Scotland because Edward the First only had eyes in Scotland to be his. So what happened at a meeting in Berwick, instead of the Bruces getting the crown of Scotland, Edward the First awarded it to Balliol, who he thought he could control like a puppet king, which did work for a while, what I say, did work for a while. Uh, Balliol had to raise uh, taxes from the Scottish people that went to Westminster. My God, things haven't changed much, have they? It's still the same today. <laughs> anyway, um, what happened is Balliol eventually got fed up with us and rebelled and decided to fight against Edward the First. Get involved in a battle at Dunbar, and his, the Scottish army was completely decimated at Dunbar. Yeah. And uh, Balliol ended up being uh, abdicated. Now it's got to be remembered that when William Wallace rose to uh, to prominence. He was fighting for Balliol. Now, that is the reason. That is the reason why the Bruces at that time did not fight. Robert the Bruce Sr., 80 years of age, installed in his son, Robert the Bruce, and his grandson, Robert the Bruce, who later became King of Scots. The Bruces, the crown of Scotland belongs to the Bruces, and he installed that in to keep fighting for it. Uh, I think it's amazing that that man was 80 when he was fighting for the, the, the right to be King of Scots. Anyway, as we know, later on, things changed. Uh, Balliol uh, abdicated. He, he moved to France. He was actually let go by Edward I, one of the few folk that did get let go by Edward I. Uh, Bruce rose to, to prominence. Now, the minute that happened, it was horrendous what happened because... Edward I did everything to destroy Robert the Bruce. They captured the two brothers of Robert Bruce, Thomas and Alexander Bruce, near Carlisle. And they were taken to Carlisle town centre and they were hung, drawn and quartered. They captured his other brother, Nigel Bruce, in the north of Scotland. They took him all the way down to Berwick and in Berwick town centre he was hung, drawn and quartered. And when you read the story of Robert the Bruce, the fight that he put up over many, many years, fighting overwhelming odds, many times he was outnumbered and he had to fight off people to survive, to eventually build up the Scottish people so that they could fight on the field at Bannockburn. And we were there yesterday, John Mellon and a number of other Scottish patriots to remember Robert the Bruce, fighting at Bannockburn to free Scotland. And a most important point here is that the minute Robert the Bruce won that battle, the high English taxes imposed by Edward the First stopped. And when Bruce died in 1329, I find this amazing. Even though there wasn't TV or radio or newspapers back in that time, 20,000 people lined the route of that man's funeral. He was held in such high regard for what he'd done for the Scottish people. The people could live in peace. They didn't have high English taxes and were able to live when Robert the Bruce freed them from the tyranny of Westminster rule. And that should be remembered, folks. So to me, bless the man in cloth of gold, Robert the Bruce. They weren't, they weren't fighting for riches either, James. That's it. And the salary. Absolutely. No Absolutely. All right. Um, you mentioned Wallace, by the way. There's something else that you wanted to mention. Well, how, Wallace. How, how in hell is a Wallace in in uh, run, running for to be the next prime? Oh, minister? yeah, that, that was something I put up during the week. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Wallace when he with the Tories. Oh no, you can make that stop. He's favourite. This guy Ben Wallace. I mean, parachute oh, no. regiment. <laughs> oh Jesus! And you know what's no, it's even more, it's just as annoying to me anyway, as a Cameron, one of the greatest and most loyal clans of a lot, Cameron of Lochiel, going way back to bloody the 45 Rebellion. The, the Camerons were one of the greatest freedom fighting clans of a lot, and we ended up with a bloody Prime Minister of the British state, David Cameron. I don't think he even is a Cameron, I think he changed his name. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know your history, James. <laughs> 
Well, <laughs> Anna Cameron and my mother say go back to Cameron of Loch Yule. We back to Cameron of Loch Yule. One of the first clans to declare for Bonnie <laughs> Prince Charlie. Some say it was the Cameron of Loch Yule, others say it was Ranald MacDonald of Clan MacDonald. So there you go. Take your choice. Right. <laughs> oh, well, um, next topic um, that we have for you is um, something that James came up with. Uh, how did Brit TV become Tory TV? Well, was it ever not? Well, I suppose it is the same, really. But what happened when during this uh, fiasco with the outgoing of Boris Johnston? All you got in the news, and I calculated, it must have been over 90% of the news was either about Tories. Now, even mm. bad publicity is good. So it was all about Tories or all about Labour. Right? So all that's all the people in this little Brit bubble are getting fed. Labour and Tory stories. So all their focus is on, who am I going to vote? Labour or Tory? Labour or Tory? And they're conditioned that way. And people that are conditioned that way, you kind of get them out of this conditioning. This is the hardest problem that we have to solve. How are we going to get through the fact that they control 100% of our media? I loved a film years ago called The Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> and he's got to get to the uplink to break the TV link that's been brainwashing the people for years. And he only needed on for a short time to start getting people to see that they've been fed lies for years. That's all we need to do, get on that TV. We're not allowed on the TV to give our point of view. Tell us something else. English people, English people be on TV to talk about republicanism. English republicans are not allowed on the television. The whole system is totally 100% controlled by the media. Television, newspapers, radio, it's all 100% controlled by this corrupt system. John, you say something? Uh, I was going to say something. But, but... Yeah, and you... I, was going to, I was just going to say, did you notice that, that um, oh, what was his name, Mick Lynch, the, TU, yeah. the railway trade union spokesman? Yeah, was getting a real following, and they 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 deplatformed him. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be around now, does he? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the way they do it. Way way yeah. back, like, like four four. Was... Like, heroes were, don't you? His hero was James Connolly. Aye. Yeah. Well, so, well so... you know, it, it we're we're going to. I'm I'm hoping you know, difficult times produce extraordinary people. And we're going to have to see people of his caliber. And we're, you're right, James. We're, we're going to have to find a way around the media, because Absolutely. it's 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 this it. it's this drip feed of of of, of toxic propaganda. Absolutely. So that people are not allowed, not being allowed to, to think. They're not being allowed to know what there is to think about, let alone, you know, ask to think about it. Yeah. So we're going to have to get creative and. I can't for the life of me at the moment think how we go around it. But you know what? There's never been a, a problem in the history of the human race for which there hasn't been a solution no, that was not. waiting to be found. So we're just going to have to find it. Well, we have, have some in, independent media. How do we get to do that? Oh, wait a minute. That's what, what we're trying to do with these kinds of shows. Absolutely. James, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I, I want to say something, yeah. Uh, we've got to think of every way. We've got to think of the claim of rights. We've got to think of everything that we can do to free this country. Now, I want everybody to look at Gandhi. Even look at clips of the movie, if you don't want to look into the writings of Gandhi. Look at the clips of the movie of Gandhi. This man kept up constant protests. The protests were on a daily basis. It pissed the Brits off so much that they just packed up and left. Time for you to leave. We've got to get to that situation, folks. We've got to do constant protests to get rid of them. So one day they'll just say, right, we've had enough. Okay, pack up, take all your Brit shit with you, leave, <laughs> and take all these Brit Scots with you because they don't really believe in their own country. So get them out. Bring in any, people from other countries. Bring them in from Wales. Bring them in from Ireland. Bring them in from England. People who want to build a better Scotland, bring them in here. Send all these Brit Scots that really don't care about Scotland. Get them all out. That's the best solution. 
far as the settlers go from down south, I don't want yeah. to sound racist there. But I think when, when they move in here, they shouldn't have got a vote for at least 10 years. They should have done that long ago. I don't know if that's <laughs> very controversial. But, uh, I Just know a wee how... bit. Just a wee bit. I think, right. Actually, I think what the figures show, there have been a few surveys on it. What they show is that once people move to Scotland um, and they've, they've been here for a while, they tend to be more likely to be uh, pro-Scottish independence. They tend to be more um, vested in Scotland's future than the older generation of Scots. Yeah, That's, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. That, just look at our Daniel. You know, it's a really yeah. interesting phenomenon. And, yeah. you, you know, I keep saying to people, the Cheyenne had a saying, they talked about the like-hearted people. You know, they looked for people that had the same heart and then they would welcome them into the nation. And so I'd, I'd, you know, I think it would be foolish to lose that opportunity. I, I don't know what the period of time is that where people have committed to living here and, the, and this is where their life is going to be and their children are going to grow up. At some point, this thing happens, at, at, at least according to the, the surveys we're getting back, where they become as much aligned with the notion of the best Scotland that there can be and, and, and and self-determination as, as anybody, and probably more, as I said, than, say, my mother's generation. Well, I'm yeah. going to withdraw my statement there. <laughs> it was a sort of, I put a post up, I told everyone it was a tongue-in-cheek uh, comment. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just a thing to think about. Um, listen, I've got, I've got a bit of, sorry, so sorry, guys, I've got a bit of bad news. I'm being called on to go and my daughter-in-law has been stuck with COVID down south All for right. two weeks and I'm going to have to go fetch her from the station um, no she's not, my grandson has not seen his mum for two weeks, she was meant to be away for four days and it's been 15 days Aww. nearly today <laughs> so um, I hate to I hate to love and leave you but no, it's, don't it's, worries. You know, it's lovely no to see worries. you it was great having you on thanks for having me it's great to have you here anyway I hope you can come Definitely. on at a later date I, I, I'd love to, and I'll send you. I'll send you some stuff, James, and look That's forward right. to talking about a claim of right event much. in the in the not too distant future. Yeah. Well, Take care. Awesome. To the hope over fear, uh, rally. She will. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, well, actually, I was trying to look if we could go back to the claim of rights uh, part with her, but she had to leave. Um, Anything else that we Yeah, can I, can discuss? I can mention a few things. I, I, I went to the meeting uh, a, a few days ago, the ALBA meeting, mm -hmm. and we had speeches from Tommy Sheridan. Was that the, uh, the, the, the uh, We ALBA book yeah, tour? Yeah. yeah. The speeches from Tommy Sheridan and also uh, Alex Salmon. Now, I put a couple of questions to them, and they were very important questions. I'll tell you, tell you the reason why. After I gave these questions, after I left the hall, there were people coming up to me and said, these are great ideas. Why are these people that are sitting at the desk, why are they not taking them on board? Right, the first point is this. In Alaska, which is a state in America, as we all know, every year, every citizen gets handed around $2,000 in their hand, a dividend, from oil revenue. Now, Alaska is not independent, but they have the right to make certain laws. And they chose to have a law where they are allowed to take a dividend for their citizens from the oil fund because Alaska is rich in oil. Not as rich as, as Scotland is, but it's rich in oil, Alaska. So every year, as I say, around $2,000 is handed to every citizen in Alaska. Now, we should have the power, even in a devolved parliament in Scotland, to pay every citizen in Scotland two or three thousand pounds. And folk will go, that's too much money, but that's only for the dumb. Because there is a fortune, an absolute fortune in oil revenue, believe me. Two thousand, three thousand to every citizen is chicken feed. I would re I'd reasonably say we could pay every citizen 
And this is irrespective, by the way, of what colour or creed. As long as they are a citizen living in Scotland, doesn't matter what their religion is or whether they've got any religion at all. If you're in Scotland, you should be paid a dividend from the vast oil reserves that we have, a dividend from that oil. And 2,000 or 3,000 would not be unreasonable for every single citizen. Now, Alex Salmon thought it was a good idea. The only thing is, he says, but wouldn't it be better leaving the money until pension age? No, because some folk don't even, sad to say, reach pension age these days. I've been to a couple of funerals in the last few months to people that are dying in their 50s, <coughs> 60s, they don't even reach pension age. It's terrible. The amount of people that are dying are not even reaching pension age. So I don't think it's too much trouble to give a dividend of 2000 or even 3000 to every citizen in Scotland. And the listeners out there, please get behind me on this. If you feel that we, as Scots, deserve a dividend from the oil revenue, please let me know if you agree with that. Uh, because I'm going to start getting some leaflets together and start getting this message out that we, the people of Scotland, are entitled to a dividend, irrespective of race or religion. We, as citizens of Scotland, are entitled to that dividend. And a lot of people, as I say, when I was leaving the hall, stopped me to speak to me about this, thought it was a great idea. Now, the other point I came up with, which is very significant, is that, as was mentioned earlier uh, by Sarah, was the, the absolute... <laughs> fraudulent way that that 2014 referendum was run. It was disgusting. The most biased referendum in human history. So as I pointed out at this meeting, that document was no way a safeguard for us. There should have been safeguards in that document of the 2000, 2014 referendum. We have got to put these safeguards in in the next referendum. They will not be allowed to contact heads of state of other countries, like going to Barack Obama and asking him to speak out against Scottish independence, which we all know he did. Uh, Cameron also went to other uh, world leaders to try and talk out against independence. He called all the heads of industry to Downing Street, told them to advise all their workers that they would lose their jobs if they didn't, uh, if they didn't comply. Uh, they had to vote against independence for Scotland. The banks were told to tell the, the people that had money in their banks they would lose all their money if they didn't vote for, uh, if they voted for independence. And many private companies even went along with us and gave letters out to the people telling them that they couldn't, they didn't have the right to vote yes for independence. The thing is, James, they had no legal right to interfere in that referendum. John, that's exactly what I'm coming to, John. That's exactly what I'm coming to. We have got to put in that document that is against the law. It's illegal for them to do that. It's illegal for them to contact heads of government of other countries for an interference. It's illegal for them to take the ballot papers and take them down to England. God knows what they've done when I'm down there. Change them all over, maybe. Who knows? And it's illegal for them to illegal for them to contact heads of industry and tell them to speak out against their workers, illegal to contact banks to, t to frighten people and tell them we'll lose all their money if we get independence. It was disgusting, the most disgusting referendum in human history. I would tell them to stuff the referendum. There's no bearing at all. It was no. an illegal referendum. Yeah, and I've tried to find those videos on YouTube. I can't find them now, James. They've, cut, they've taken a lot of them down, by the way. Taken a lot of them down. But I can't find them. But listen, we've got to make this clear, folks. If there's going to be a referendum, we've got to put in that document that they are not allowed to contact heads of industry and bring them down the street and give them a lecture. They're not allowed to get international interference by contacting heads of state of other countries. Now, anybody, any of our listeners, please get involved in this. If you agree with this, please let me know. It's very, very important for the future of this country that we get this document right at another referendum. Okay? I agree. You leave your own stone, send in love bombs. Yeah. Just... Definitely. All right, guys. Um...
I've got, have we got time to go through the events? Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, mate. We'll go ahead. We, we basically started a little bit late. So if we go um, a couple of minutes over the hour, that's not a problem. We're still before the hour. So go ahead. Yeah, right. We had a very good uh, event uh, yesterday, as, as John was aware. It was very, very good weather. And we were there to remember Robert the Bruce. And I'll tell you something. We had some American people. Uh, I think most of them were from Texas, in fact. And, joined the uh, yeah. And they've joined uh, John's history page. Um, they, they, were, they, they love to hear the history of Scotland. I think they were of a, a Scottish descent, these people. And yeah. uh, they couldn't believe that the people there from the National Trust of, of, uh, of Scotlandshire were trying to stop us through this event. They couldn't believe they didn't want us to tell the history of one of our greatest heroes. These Americans couldn't believe that this was actually going on in Scotland. But I told them it's not its not a, a one-off thing. This has been happening for years. Whenever the Scottish resistance has gone to a historical place to tell people about history, they tried to close us down. They don't want people to know the history, the true history of Scotland. Uh, and this is what it's all about. They wanted to shut us down and stop us talking. Um so that was a great event just anyway to remember the, the birthday of Robert the Bruce. And as I mentioned earlier, this is the actual birthday, uh, the 11th of July, 1274. Now, next week, we have what's called the Bell of the Bray Rally. Now, this is at Cathedral Square at the top of High Street in Glasgow, where uh, the cathedral is uh, right next to it is, is now a, a hospital, but where that hospital stand, that used to be Glasgow Castle. So back in 1297, William Wallace and his uncle uh, led an army of Scots and retook Glasgow Castle, which, as I say, stood right on the spot, where, which is now a, a hospital. It's right next to Glasgow Cathedral. So we're going there next week, Glasgow Cathedral. If you want to take a note of the time, it's 1 p.m., 16th of July, the William Wallace Bell of the Bray Rally. To remember that uh, great piece of history when William Wallace and his men retook Glasgow Castle. Uh, the week after that, this is a really good event, folks, if you want to get your notebook out. We are going across the water to Rossi to remember the brave men of Butte. Now, what happened way back in 1297? 600 men from Butte, led by Sir John Stuart, went to the Battle of Falkirk in July of 1297. And as we all know, that was one of the worst battles in Scottish history. The Scottish army was totally decimated, led, and it was led by William Wallace. The 600 men of Butte fell to a man. Every single one of them. Just imagine that for a minute, folks. 600 women waiting for the man to return. And they never did. 600 men wiped out. The Scottish history has got some real horrible pieces in it, and that's one of them. 600 men are beautiful. Now, this is a great event anyway. We go over in the water on the ferry from Weems Bay. And when we reach the port at Rossi, it's only 100 yards away from that is a monument to the 600 men of Butte under the command of Sir John Stewart, who fell to a man at the Battle of Falkirk. So that event is on the 23rd of July at 2 p.m. at in Rossi. So we actually uh, set out from Weems Bay and go across on the ferry. It's a great event, folks, if you can manage. And each time we've had this event, the weather's been lovely. Great wee trip across the water. So if you want any more information on it, look on the Scottish Resistance Group page or contact me or anybody else that you know in the Scottish Resistance to get more details of it. So that's 2 p.m. next week, and that is the Men of Butte Valley, 23rd of July. Now, after that, July and August are the Wallace months. So what we do, we have William Wallace events. William Wallace, the Traitor's Tower Rally, is on the 6th of August, which is a Saturday. 
And that's near to the date when he was captured, which was either the 3rd or 5th August. There's always dispute over what day he was captured, either the 3rd or 5th August. It's 50-50 in the history books, as far as I can see, folks. Uh, doesn't matter to me where it was started or where it was the 5th, it was captured and taken to London and hung, drawn and quartered. We're having this event. William Wallace Traitors Tower Rally, and it's at the Tower in Main Street in Lulligan. 1 p.m. on the 6th of August, <coughs> if you can make it, folks. That's another good one to go to. Now, moving on. Um, that's another Wallace event. Uh, William Wallace event on the Smithfield Rally. This is in Smithfield in London on the 21st of August uh, at 1 p.m. Now, Smithfield is where they hung a lot of Scottish patriots. William Wallace, his brother John Wallace, uh, lots of other Scottish patriots were hung, drawn and quartered at Smithfield, which is now a meat market. It's, probably, it's the biggest meat market in Europe. The stench of dead flesh is unbelievable when you go there, by the way. But at Smithfield, on St. Bartholomew's Hospital, there's a big plaque, and it says, to the immortal memory of Sir William Wallace, who was executed near this spot. And the reason it says near this spot is because that's not where he was executed. We did some investigation uh, in the Guild Hall in London, where they keep all the historical records, and there's a map that shows where the gallows were, and it was traced to across the road to a place which is now called Haberdasher's Hall. Big, big black letters, big letters. It's got Haberdasher's Hall in this building. And right next to it is all these railings, iron railings. And you look through the iron railings and look through to the back where the gallows were to kill all these patriots from Scotland. Also, to uh, people from England were hung, drawn and quartered there that didn't agree with the, uh, the tyrants that ruled at that time in England. The, a lot of English people were hung, drawn and quartered as well. Um, where the gallows were, I kid you not here, you can see it for yourself if you want to go to this event. There is a big plaque, folks, and it says, serve and obey. Serve and obey. Where they murdered all these people, where they were hung, drawn, and quartered, there's a plaque that says, serve and obey. You couldn't make it up. This is the truth. So if you can manage to that one, the Smithfield Rally, contact me. I'd be delighted to tell you more about it and we can make our way to Smithfield and remember William Wallace and the other patriots from Scotland that were hung, drawn and quartered. Now, earlier in the day in London at 11am, we will be going in front of Westminster with a PA system and we will be protesting against Westminster rule of Scotland. We will also be going to Westminster Abbey, which is just a few yards from uh, Westminster Parliament. And we'd be protesting, requesting the return, the repatriation of the body of Mary Queen of Scots to Scotland. The body of Mary Queen of Scots should be in Scotland, not in England. We want it repatriated to Scotland. So we'll be protesting at these two places, and we have got another few places that we are considering doing some protests at while we are in London. So anybody that wants to get involved, please contact me and I will give you more information. Finally, uh, there is a rally on the 27th of August, and that is the Flower Scotland Rally. Now, at this rally, this is, this is brilliant, this rally. We've held this a couple of times. We go through all our earliest heroes, from Wallace and Bruce to Black Douglas, you name it, we go through all these guys, how they fought for Scotland, uh, the ones that were hung, drawn and quartered, the ones that were killed in battle. We go through a lot of Scottish heroes and tell you a bit about them. In the second half, we go into the more modern patriots, uh, times like uh, the 45 Rebellion, 1820, when when guys were, were uh, beheaded and uh, this, they were murdered by the British state. We go into more uh, modern times again, into the 1900s, people like John McLean, 
uh, the great Red Clydesider. Uh, we talk about Wendy Wood, who was one of the founders of the National Party that became the Scottish National Party. And then finally, we go over some of our more recent patriots, many of whom we have lost in the last few years. And we will have speakers for each of these divisions of this event. We will also have singers there singing about some of these patriots. The Flower of Scotland Rally, 1pm, Freedom Square, Saturday the 27th of August. So that's an update of some of the upcoming events. We've got events after that, but I'd be here all night to tell you all the events that <laughs> Scottish resistance. But that Definitely. is just some of them. If you have any questions on any events, please contact me. If you're interested in uh, helping behind this campaign, we're going to start to get a dividend paid to every Scot in Scotland from the oil revenue, please come and help me. I listen to every single person. And I've got to say, when we have Scottish resistance meetings, every single vote, vote from every person is equal. There's no day waiting and saying, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, like a political party. Every single member's vote is equal. Everybody gets to say what they want. Definitely. If you're interested in getting behind the campaign to get a dividend paid to every person in Scotland, please get behind me. Come and, come and join us. Come and to our meetings of the Scottish resistance, we want to get a dividend paid to every Scot from the oil revenue. And if you're also interested in making sure that the next referendum is going to be fair, uh, the points are made about making a document so watertight that these rogues, dirty rotten scoundrels in Westminster will not be able to contact heads of industry or go to world leaders and ask them to talk against Scottish independence. We've got to put a stop to that. We've got to make sure it's in the document. Definitely. So that's it, folks. That's an update on all the events that are upcoming. Please. John, John you were saying something? Yep. Yeah, but I was saying that they certainly can't ask any of the European Union to, to back them against us. They, they, yep. they can't ask China or Russia. <laughs> they can ask them. They don't oh, really ask the Americans. <laughs> they fell out everybody else. <laughs> the only reason yeah. the Americans, the only reason the Americans are going on with them is all their, their weapons are stashed here in Scotland. Yeah, That's definitely. Right. Not definitely. far from. Um, by the way, um, there was one comment uh, from Derek McNair that, that I really want to want to mention. An independent body should run the referendum, preferably from a neutral organization. Well. Definitely. A, I could, yeah. yeah. Uh, good idea. Very good, good idea. Definitely. Uh, but, but it wouldn't help to get these uh, stipulations put in. That was definitely. Definitely. Could not good. agree more. Could not agree more, mate. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Um, we've, well, we, I'm, I'm not sure we've really went over that much because we started late. So we're fine. Yeah. And we had a great show. Um, uh, it was great having Sarah on. Um, but I want to go through the final comments. John, final comments yeah. for tonight. I'm just going to thank Sarah uh, because she's been very, very extremely busy. Definitely. She the show tonight and she was at St. Andrews and everyone at the weekend. Very busy. She wouldn't admit to that. Oh, she did admit to being busy. Yeah, and, and, and tired. And tired. tired. <laughs> respect, total respect for now. I'll, I'll, I'll promote them now, but I'll be with them. Yeah. yeah. I can see what's just covering me in the tire last week. Yeah. I, I, I was tired when I got back for the event yesterday. <laughs> uh, the heat as well, James. Though. Oh, the heat. The heat was tremendous yesterday. The heat as well. It was yeah. incredible. I'm not. I'll be watching it. Are you still yeah, there? No, yeah, he, he froze up a bit. Anything else you want to mention for final comments, uh, John? No, no, I'm just saying I've enjoyed the show again tonight. Definitely. Yep. It was a great show. Yes, it was quite a private show before it was on it, but there was a lot of people tuning in. Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, a couple of people that that haven't been on yet before, so mm -hmm. it was great having seen the people uh, and the regulars, of course. Yeah. Um, I just want to say I, again, like John said, I want to thank Sarah um, for being on and taking the time out of a bit busy schedule, and. Um, uh, Please, everybody. Um, no matter uh, no matter who you politically follow, check out 
Salvo, check out the claim of rights. Um, it's an official uh, um, document. So please check it out. Check what it's all about. It, it predates uh, the, uh, the Act of Union. So check it out. Please do. Uh, you don't have to leave the party. They can do no, it hell no. I mean, like I said, like I said, no matter if we look at the at the at the Salvo launch, there were uh, people there from all parts of the political spectrum. SNP joining member. exactly joining yeah. together as it should be. Yeah, and yeah. I met loads of them. They're all marvelous. Definitely, marvelous. definitely, definitely. Yeah. So. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the show and I uh, hope you hope to see you again next week. James. Well, thank you to everyone on the panel tonight. It was a, it was a real good show. We went through quite a lot in, in the time. I just want to say to people, if you want to be on this show, please contact myself or Raymond, maybe even John, <laughs> and say, I want to be on the show. We want to hear from other people. Listen, folks. Don't be shy. Everybody, show from America. Yeah, everybody's got good ideas. Yeah. Don't keep them to yourself. Everybody's got good ideas to make a difference. I'm just one person. John's one person. Raymond's one person. We're all doing as much as we can to get Scotland nearer independence. But you out there, you've all got good ideas. I listen. I like to listen to everybody's ideas. Definitely. Come on. This show. Everybody's, yeah. everybody's welcome on the Scottish Resistance Show. Join democracy mission as you. Think, think of us. Think of us. Well, not us personally, but the show and and the group as a big think tank. Please, yeah. give yeah. us all your yeah. ideas. You and I know it. that some of the listeners tonight have been on the show before. Yeah, we want you back again. Come back on the show. We love to hear from all the different views of people. And if you've never been on the show before, contact us. Come on the show. We'd be delighted to have you on the panel. Definitely. So there we are, folks. It's been a great show tonight. Just one thing to say, one last thing. This is the Scottish resistance. We will never give up the fight for Scotland's freedom. Good night, folks. Good night, folks. <laughs>